Good morning. Apologize for being with you on video today, but I'm trying to do what we've been telling everyone to do. If you're exhibiting any of the symptoms or uh, at any way feeling unwell, uh, we've asked you to stay home. And unfortunately, I have one of the symptoms. I don't think it's COVID. I think it's just something that I ate and uh, it'll be fine uh, after a day or so. But uh, out of an abundance of caution, I wanted to be sure that we don't do anything that would endanger anybody else. So we'll be coming to you by video this morning, and I hope that'll be okay. Uh, we're going to be reading this morning from 1 Samuel chapter 13. Uh, we'll be reading from verses 13 and 14 this morning. Uh, ironically, we're going to be talking about excuses, and I promise this is not an excuse for me not to be with you. There's no place I'd rather be this morning than right there with you. Uh, but again, we want to be cautious and I want to do what I've been telling you to do. So uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do this morning. But I have come up with a few really good excuses in my life. I expect that you probably have too. But some excuses are actually better than others. Uh, CareerBuilder.com lists some of the worst excuses for coming to work late. Here's just a few of those. Uh, these were actual excuses that were used with uh, human resource folks at their companies. Here's the first one. The ozone in the air flattened my tires. Well, I knew that ozone layer was up to something. Here's another one. I'm bowling the game of my life and I can't stop now. Who's going to pick up that 710 split if I go to work? Yeah, I can see that. Here's another one. I accidentally ate cat food instead of tuna. Uh, maybe that photo of a cat on the label should have been a clue. Or another one, I have to attend the funeral of my wife's cousin's pet because I'm an uncle and a pallbearer. I really need to see this guy's genealogy. I guess we all have excuses. And in this passage of scripture, King Saul had a whopper of an excuse. Actually, it sounded pretty good on the surface. In 1 Samuel 13, Saul had begun an attack against the Philistines, and it didn't start out too well. Verse 5 tells us the Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. I've never counted sand on the seashore, but I think we get the idea here. Uh, this looked like a, a Cecil B. DeMille movie, soldiers as far as the eyes could see. And Saul had 3,000 men. Now, that may have looked good back at the palace, but it didn't look so good facing that sea of a Philistine army. But time for the attack had come. Saul knew better than to go into battle without going to the Lord, and that's a good choice. We shouldn't go to any of the battles of our life without first going to the Lord. Truth is, we should go into any of the days in our life, always up to date on our prayer, always having sought the Lord first and foremost. Samuel had told Saul to do exactly that, but Samuel had said the Lord wanted Saul to wait until Samuel could be there as a priest to offer the sacrifice. But Saul started to grow impatient. According to verse 8, he waited seven days, the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived, and Saul went out to greet him. Now, on the surface, that doesn't seem so bad. Samuel was late. Uh, the battle was brewing. Saul's soldiers were growing anxious. Uh, why not go ahead and, and do this worship service now, even though Samuel wasn't there, and even though that's not really the way the Bible prescribed that it should be done, but, but why not go ahead and get it done so that they could move forward into battle? And that's exactly the excuse that Saul had for Samuel. What have you done, asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. That sounds reasonable, right? Oh, well, except for one thing. 
that wasn't what God had said to do. First Samuel 13, Samuel answers like this, you acted foolishly, Samuel said, you have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time, but now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Let's get back up uh, in a minute here. Uh, Saul and his armies were, were actually not under attack yet. They were worried that they might be attacked. It was not logistically impossible for them to wait for Samuel to arrive, just as the Lord had told them to do. Saul just felt uncomfortable waiting on the Lord's timing. So it actually wasn't necessary for Saul to start the sacrifice without Samuel. It was just more convenient. Bottom line, Saul didn't start the service early because he had to. He started the service early because he wanted to. And even worse, he knew he was violating God's command when he did it. Otherwise, he, he wouldn't have tried to justify what he did to Samuel. He wouldn't have had an excuse. And I think we can all identify with Saul. We've all made excuses when deep down, we knew what the bottom line was. We knew that we had just decided to do differently than what God wanted us to do. For example, we choose not to do a ministry that God's calling us into because, well, I don't have time. It's not my gift. Uh, maybe I can do it some other time, just not right now. Excuses. Think about it. God knows exactly how much time we have. He knows precisely what gifts we have, and his timing is always perfect. So ultimately, we've simply decided that we know better than God. Kind of like Saul. Or think about this. Uh, this temptation just got the best of me because I was weak at that point in my life. I didn't realize how bad it was until I got in too deep. I had a rough fill in the blank, childhood, week, day. Once again, God knows what kind of day you've had. <laughs> he gives us his word to warn us about the pitfalls of life. And it is in our weaknesses that he is made strong. We just decided that we know better than God. Kind of like Saul. So here's the thing. Instead of excuses, maybe we should just look to God's word. Maybe in those times when we feel ourselves starting to make an excuse, we should stop and ask, did I really know what God wanted me to do? Or is this just me? And if I did what God wanted me to do, then I don't need an excuse about it. If I, if I didn't do what God wanted me to do, I don't need to make an excuse. I need to seek God's forgiveness and God's cleansing and, and seek his power to be, make things right. You see, God doesn't give us commands that we can't follow. He doesn't provide us guidance that is not exactly where we need to go. God's wisdom is always the best possible choice. It may not always seem that way. We're going to be in situations where the enemy is gathering, the soldiers are getting restless, and our instinct will be just like Saul's. Our instinct will be to just take a little detour around God's command, and that's never going to work out well. It didn't work out for Saul. It won't work out for us either, no matter what the excuse so this week, stop. When, when you're faced with a decision in life, when you're faced with, with something that, that you need to do, maybe it's a big decision, maybe it's a small one, uh, maybe it's something you've been thinking about, maybe you've been praying about for a long, long time, maybe it's just something that has come up this week, maybe it came up at work, maybe it came up at home, whatever it might be, stop and ask yourself, okay, if I do this, Am I later going to have to make an excuse for why I did this? There will never be a good excuse for not doing what God tells us to do. So the time to correct that is before we've ever done it. Stop, take time in prayer and say, Lord, I'm in this situation. 
I need your wisdom. I need your guidance. I need your help. Go to the scripture. Look for scriptures that, that deal with the issues that you're dealing with. See how God's word guides you in that particular situation. Pray that God will put Christian influences in your life. Maybe a Christian friend, a brother and sister there at church, or, or maybe someone in your family that, that you could go and, and ask, hey, I'm facing this decision in my life, and I want to make sure that I make the right one. I want to make sure I do the thing that God would have me to do. Can you help me figure out what to do? Most importantly, don't depend on an excuse. There's never a good excuse not to do God's will in your life. Heavenly Father, so many times we're faced with decisions in our life and, and we make poor choices because we don't stop and ask you. Father, we pray that you would help us this week as we face the choices that we make, both the, the simple uh, everyday choices that we'll make throughout the week, and, and maybe some of us are facing some very difficult, hard choices. We pray that you'll help us to stop and ask you your will, that you'll help us to go to your word and you'll reveal for us there in the scripture guidance for where you want our life to go. And Heavenly Father, when we look back at the end of this week, we won't be making excuses. We'll simply be thanking you for your wisdom and your guidance as we see the results of your mighty plan. Help us, Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to do the invitation uh, a little different, but really kind of the same as what we normally have done. We're not able to have the altar call uh, because of the virus. And Obviously, won't be able to do that here from my home, but you can respond this morning. If you're there worshiping at National Heights in the pew racks before you, there are some decision cards, some, some connection cards. Just take that out, uh, and maybe you've got a, a question in your life. Maybe you're wondering, you know, I've, I, I've got some decisions that I need to make. I need somebody to pray with me. Just give us your contact information. If you want to tell us a little bit about what, what your prayer need is, on the back of the card, there's a place to do that. And you can place those in the baskets as you exit this morning. Maybe you're wondering, how do I have a relationship with God? H how does that even work? We want to help you with that. There's a place on the card that says, I want to follow Jesus. Just check that box and place that uh, in the, the basket. And, and we'll contact you and share with you how, how God's made the absolute perfect provision for you. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sin. And then to rise again three days later so that this morning you could receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We want to help you to know how to do that. Maybe there's another decision you're thinking about. Maybe you're looking for a church home. Again, there's a checkbox there on the connection card for you to simply indicate uh, your desire. And we'll be glad to get that information to you. Or maybe you just have a prayer need that you'd like us to be praying with. Again, there's a place on the back of that connection card where you can indicate that, we'll be glad to be praying with you over the next week. For those of you watching online, uh, you can either email the church, nhbc at nationalheights.org, or we have a brand new way that you can connect with us. We have an online connection card that's just like the cards that are there in the pew racks at church. What you'll need to do is go to nationalheights.org backslash hello. Or if you're watching us on Facebook, there is a link right there on your Facebook page that you can click. It'll take you right to that connection card. Again, you can give us some contact information and we'll be able to pray with you. On that connection card, there's a place to indicate, hey, I wanna know how to follow Jesus. I wanna know how to be a part of National Heights and some other uh, options as well. There's also a, a box where you can type in a prayer request and we'll be glad to be praying with you. But wherever you may be, whether at church or online, we want to pray with you. We want to help you in your next step in your life with God. So contact us. We'll be glad to do that. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Again, I'm sorry that I can't be with you personally. Uh, again, I'm sure this isn't uh, COVID, but you know, I, I want to be absolutely sure. So we'll take care of that this week and hope to be with you uh, next Sunday. I'll turn the service back over to Joshua and uh, we'll be glad for you to worship. Uh, here or online 
as we serve the Lord together. God bless you.